a reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offering to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in a large bowl. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, All that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his. Responsorial Psalm I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good He has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of His faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill in the presence of all His people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to his creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, for if the blood of goats and bulls and the, and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark.
And on the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is put to death, his disciples said to him, Where are we to go and make ready for you to take the Passover meal? And he sent two of his disciples, and said to them, Go into the town, and there will come to you a man with a vessel of water, go after him, and wherever he goes in, say to the owner of the house, The master says, Where is my guest room, where I may take the Passover with my disciples? And he will take you up himself to a great room with a table and seats, there make ready for us. The disciples went out and came into the town, and saw that it was as he had said, and they made ready the Passover. And while they were taking food, he took bread, and after blessing it, he gave the broken bread to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given praise, he gave it to them, and they all had a drink from it, and he said to them, This is my blood of the testament, which is given for men. Truly I say to you, I will take no more of the fruit of the vine till the day when I take it new in the kingdom of God. And after a song of praise to God they went out to the mountain of olives. Today, we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. The feast was introduced in the 13th century to encourage devotion and adoration to the Blessed Eucharist. Later, the feast was extended to the entire Latin Church by Pope Urban IV in 1264. In today's readings, we talk about the covenant, sacrifice, and blood. In the first reading, Moses erected at the foot of the mountain an altar. Then he offered young bulls as a sacrifice, as a peace offering to the Lord. Then he sprinkled the blood on the altar. Later, he also sprinkled the blood to the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his. The second reading tells us also of the sacrifice of Christ. The new covenant was sealed with the blood of Christ. This is a perfect sacrifice ever offered to God. And in the Gospel, Jesus instituted the Holy Eucharist to which he himself is the victim. He is the one being sacrificed and he is the priest. When we attend the Mass, we need to be very attentive to what the priest is saying, especially during the Last Supper narrative, because it is at this point that Jesus commemorates the Last Supper when he established the Holy Eucharist. And it is also the time when the, when the substance of the bread and wine is transform into the body and blood of Jesus. With the Last Supper narration itself, we can understand how important is the presence of Jesus in the bread and wine, which were transformed into his real body and blood. What a great loss on our part, if we go to Mass only with the intention of fulfilling a Sunday obligation, and be in the church without listening and not being attentive to what is happening in the liturgy. And the most pitiful of all is to receive Holy Communion without reverence to the Christ that we are receiving, without even saying a short prayer of adoration after receiving it. We will be wasting only our time if we go to Mass and start chatting with others inside the church. It would be better for us not to enter the church at all, because in this way, we give chance to others to pray well without disturbance. On the other hand, blessed are those who go to Mass with the right intention and who act accordingly inside the church. May we allow ourselves to be influenced by the grace of God received in the Eucharist.
prayer of Saint Ambrose as a preparation before Mass. Lord Jesus Christ, I approach your banquet table in fear and trembling, for I am a sinner, and dare not rely on my worth, but only on your goodness and mercy. I am defiled by many sins in body and soul, and by my unguarded thoughts and words. Gracious God of majesty and awe, I seek your protection. I look for your healing. Poor troubled sinner that I am, I appeal to you, the fountain of all mercy. I cannot bear your judgment, but I trust in your salvation. Lord, I show my wounds to you. I know my sins are many and great, but they fill me with fear. But I hope in your mercies, for they cannot be numbered. Lord Jesus Christ, eternal King, God and man, crucified for mankind, look upon me with mercy and hear my prayer, for I trust in you. Have mercy on me, full of sorrow and sin, for the depth of your compassion never ends. Praise to you, saving sacrifice offered on the wood of the cross for me and all mankind. Praise to the noble and precious blood flowing from the wounds of my crucified Lord Jesus and washing away the sins of the whole world. Remember, Lord, your creature whom you have redeemed with your blood. I repent my sins and I long to put right what I have done. Merciful Father, take away all my offenses and sins. Purify me in body and soul, and make me worthy to taste the Holy of Holies. May your body and blood, which I intend to receive, although I am unworthy, be for me the remission of my sins, the washing away of my guilt, the end of my evil thoughts, and the rebirth of my better instincts. May it incite me to do the works pleasing to you and profitable to my health in body and soul and be a firm defense against the wiles of my enemies. Amen.